changes do you expect here, and uh, are you feeling some old hope running through the veins? Well, look, if you look at this rule about preventing broadcasters from investing in newspapers, that goes back to 1975, Nixon administration. A couple of things have happened since then. One, people consume more news, more hard news than ever. The audience is growing. All the statistics show that. But the other thing is the whole media environment has transformed completely. And so if you say that you're in favor of getting rid of old, bad regulation, getting rid of outdated regulation, Getting rid of this ban should really be the first thing you do. It's obvious. Hmm. Barton, um, you know, setting aside perhaps the cross ownership uh, issue, a lot of things seem to be uh, impacting Facebook and some of the other new media platforms here. Not just necessarily uh, some kind of a tectonic shift back toward old media. Maybe uh, it's you know big growth stocks not doing all that well. But has anything happened to sort of call into question the quality of the, the Facebook platform and other social media platforms, or is this something that's fleeting in your mind? Well, look, I think that Facebook is um, growing and we're starting to learn more and more about what it is. And they're starting to learn more and more about what they are. And uh, so I think these are growing pains. I think that Facebook has tons of engagement. Um, you know, I think they'll continue to have tons of engagement. It's a very unique media property. You know, but advertisers are learning that it maybe isn't the shiny uh, light that they thought before. And I think there's been a little bit of rotation of ad money back towards traditional media, back towards TV. Uh, and away from some of the digital platforms. Facebook mm -hmm. is still growing great, but I think they'd be seeing better growth but for some of these quality questions. And David, I guess that raises the question, if kind of these old media of print and TV were able to get together, as it will, uh, to, to leverage their own scale against uh, digital, what kind of consolidation would you expect? Well, first of all, on the, on the fake news front, uh, the answer to fake news are trusted brands. Uh, my members have been in the anti-fake news business for a couple hundred years, so it, there's going to be uh, an emphasis on quality in a world with a whole bunch of garbage news out there. Secondly, with the consolidation, I mean, I don't think we have to worry really about consolidation in a world with so many media properties, with so much information coming at people. What we have to worry about are who do we trust? Who's got the history and the experience to deliver high quality news, high quality journalism? And that is the traditional uh, legacy news media. Right, but so we're showing a couple of the broadcast names uh, on the screen there, but walk us through the likely outcomes that you would expect if this law is repealed. Well, one thing would, it would attract inv further investment in uh, print and digital news, news uh, media because uh, right now you have this artificial break between certain kinds of journalism, broadcast journalism, and uh, the print and digital journalism just shouldn't exist. So. It would facilitate a whole, uh, a whole bunch more uh, investment in real, solid journalism that is really the combatant for fake news. And Barton, just to move to another potential regulatory issue, it's perceived that under a President Trump, uh, the FCC might be less friendly to, to the principle of net neutrality. Maybe that's an right. overhang psychologically to the Netflixes and Facebooks of the world, which consume a lot of, uh, of bandwidth. Is that going to be something that nags these stocks for a while? Oh, that's clearly a nagging issue. You know, I think it's been very good for the cable stocks, Charter, Comcast. Um, you know, they've wanted, um, John Malone has wanted forever uh, for the cable companies to be able to leverage those pipes that they've invested in uh, to a greater degree than they have by extracting more of a toll from big bandwidth consumers. And I think they're more about Netflix than about Facebook, although Facebook is getting more video uh, focused. Um, so it's, it's a change in the landscape that, you know, with everyone thinking that the election was not likely to come out, you know, with Trump on top, um, you know, people are just starting to get kind of um, their minds wrapped around this idea that the net neutrality regime that Obama built up over the past eight years might be going. And what does that mean? You know, is it kind of drive more vertical integration like AT&T and Time Warner? Um, I don't think we fully know the answers until we see who Trump appoints to head the FCC. Because mm -hmm. I think that Trump has populist tendencies that are at odds with the, the classic Republican laissez-faire uh, mm -hmm. uh, base that uh, would be the core group of people that you look to run the FCC. So if he takes an FCC insider like an Ajit Pai, it's going to be very hard to avoid the idea that you're going to roll back the Obama rules. If he brings an outsider, you know, someone who wants to uh, avoid media consolidation because Trump hasn't been particularly friendly to the media, he may not want that to consolidate. He might use the FCC as a tool right. to block it. So we got to look at who he appoints. You know, I think the odds on favorite is he goes towards a Republican, uh, but mm -hmm. that's the risk to the story that David was putting out there.